Andrew Yang broke the hearts of a lot of his supporters on Tuesday. Here's why. Andrew Yang, I see you've been writing on your paper a lot. We haven't heard from you a little bit. Um, you haven't... Where, where do you see the race right now? Where do you see this going for Joe Biden? Uh, I believe that Joe Biden will be the Democratic nominee. And I've always said I'm going to support whoever the nominee is. So I hereby am endorsing Joe Biden to be not just the nominee for the Democratic Party, but the next president of the United States. Mm -hmm. And I say this, uh, having supported Bernie Sanders in 2016, Bernie was an inspiration for me, inspired my run. Uh, but the math says Joe is our prohibitive nominee. We need to bring the party together. Uh, we need to start working on defeating Donald Trump in the fall. I've had many personal conversations with Joe about the impact of the fourth industrial revolution on the middle class. I believe that he's the right man for the job to help us not just defeat Donald Trump, but govern the country in the years ahead. You could almost see in his face at the end that he's not exactly happy about this. You could almost see it in his face. How he's like, did I just say that? Yep, I just said that. Joe Biden doesn't support any of the innovative or interesting solutions to problems that Andrew Yang does. He just doesn't. He just doesn't. So throughout the election season, I, uh, I've given Andrew Yang quite a bit of credit. There are times I've been critical of him, um, but that's expected with any candidate. I've been critical of Bernie Sanders from time to time. Uh, when he takes a position that I'm not in favor of. So, um, but in all seriousness, this move really, really hurts his credibility. I understand that he's now, you know, working at CNN. And so by definition, he's part of the club. But you expect some degree of outsiderness to remain. And it's certainly possible there are contributors at CNN who are more outsiders, and they hold on to that credibility. But this move right here, I think it's credibility ruining. I do. He tried to, you know, he tried to couch it by saying like, oh, I, sa I always said I'd, you know, support whoever the nominee is, and he's the prohibitive nominee, so I support him. But, you know, this is that exact kind of like sheep thinking that I despise. The whole like, well, this person is now winning, so I'm going to hop on board. Who cares? I care about policy. I care about what they're actually going to do. And I thought you did too, Andrew. So, uh, sometimes I agree, sometimes I disagree. But I thought, even among our disagreements, it's a genuine disagreement. And it's just, hey, we have substantive differences. But this is embarrassing, man. It really is. So, why is it absurd to do this? Because here's Joe Biden's record. He supported the Iraq War, NAFTA, PNTR with China, Patriot Act, TPP, the repeal of Glass-Steagall, War on Drugs, Wall Street Bailout, the Anti-Gay Defense of Marriage Act, and he opposes legal marijuana, a wealth tax. I know Andrew's against the wealth tax too, so if you're a Yang fan, just ignore that one, but Medicare for All, free college, canceling student debt. And again, these are all off the top of my head. What Andrew Yang just rolled out this new project he has recently... And his whole thing is, and I think this is a pretty cool idea. He says, okay, I, you know, I'm going to support, I'll support you if you run for office and you come out in favor of UBI. Okay, sweet. So I'm happy that he's putting UBI front and center in the national conversation. I love that. That's one of the reasons I gave him so much credit is because it's a really important idea and I think we should have UBI and for somebody to champion that and make it mainstream, that's awesome. But Andrew, Tulsi Gabbard endorsed UBI and Joe Biden didn't. So why would you support the candidate who didn't do the thing that is your main thing? If Bernie Sanders was against Medicare for all, you think I would be as big of a Bernie bro as I am? Answer, no. <laughs> I wouldn't. I just wouldn't. Because it's about the policy. So Joe Biden doesn't support his main policy that he cares about. And he's like, yeah, sure, I like him. What? I, I honestly, and I, I know, I know, Tulsi Gabbard's way out of the race. Got it. But again, if you're principled, that means, no, these are my, this is my criteria. You either meet it or you don't. My litmus test, as Andrew Yang, my litmus test is UBI. Tulsi endorsed UBI. Got it. Now I'm going to back you. He didn't do it. He didn't do it. 
I'm sorry, it is credibility destroying. Because not only did you not do the thing you said you were going to do, you didn't endorse Tulsi when she endorsed UBI, and that was a while ago. That was like the day after Andrew Yang dropped out. Um, but also, I mean, it's just, if you actually care about the issues, it is objectively true that Bernie Sanders is a mile and a half better than status quo establishment Joe Biden. He is the status quo. He is the establishment. He represents the old guard that you said brought about all these problems. So listen, for everybody, for everybody who's in the Yang gang, I feel for you. I do. Because, you know, you invest so much time and energy and support into somebody and then they do something like this and you're like, what? <laughs> what? So, you know, listen, it's all about... My advice to everybody moving forward is that A lot of the times, criticism is just, it's genuine, it's legitimate. And so when people went after Andrew Yang, and they had specific concerns about policies he was pushing for, or strategies he was implementing, it's not, don't, it's not, you don't have to always be defensive. Because there is such a thing out there as nuance, as, you know, hey, I generally like him, but here's where he's wrong, and, you know, I don't like these things, and generally have the philosophy, there are no heroes. There are no heroes. And, you know, I, I've seen it recently, too, with my guy's Bernie Sanders, and I think his strategy post-Super Tuesday, when we had that, you know, earth-shifting event where the race totally changed and it went from a fractured field to one-on-one, -on -one, I think his strategy since that day has been bad. It's just been bad. Am I going to come out here and be like, no, his strategy was perfect because I like Bernie, so therefore everything he does is right. That would be stupid if I did that. I'd be, I'd be a dumb person if I did that. <laughs> so by the same token, whenever somebody criticizes your guy, understand a lot of the times it comes from a good place. That's not to say it's always genuine and legit. Sometimes criticisms are dumb, but, you know, in many instances, some of the criticisms of, uh, of Yang were spot on. And what he just did here is really destroyed his credibility in the eyes of many people who used to support him. And honestly, in all seriousness, in my eyes, because I liked Andrew Yang. If I was making, if I had, if we had ranked choice voting in this election, my order would have been Bernie number one, Tulsi number two, Yang number three, and Warren number four. So he, he was in the top tier of candidates despite my disagreements with him but after seeing this in the same way that like Warren is dead to me because of everything she's done where she's like put her middle finger up to the progressive movement as she freaking tells news outlets like the emojis that Bernie supporters sent to me really killed me like okay, you're dead to me. You don't. You never really cared about the issues like I thought you did. By the same token, endorsing Joe Biden is one of those moments too. You just didn't really care about the issues like I thought you did. And that's a damn shame. 